40 years ago, I wrote a paper titled, Why Clubs Die. This theme has persisted over the years, maybe more now than then. It has evolved into why clubs are dead to me. You may be interested in this theme. Performing artists, live show musicians, seem to be dying also. That's just a saying, not literally. And for good or bad reasons, maybe both, depending on which side of the footlights you are during the live show. I use the term dying in the performance vernacular, as in, that band really died out there. Or the antithesis, they really killed it tonight. I have coined an evolving phrase dealing with this phenomenon. Being a club owner and thinking you are an entertainer is no more rational than owning a tool set from Sears and thinking it makes you a mechanic. There is something else that disturbs me so much. It keeps me out of live performance venues. It is the sound, or rather poor application of the sound system and lack of room treatment in the club. Just like my Sears mechanic syllogism, buying a sound system for your club does not make you an entertainer. Club owners, usually wealthy playboys, egomaniacs, retired professionals, well-heeled property owners, and yes, alcoholics, think that just because they built a stage and bought a sound system, this will lead them to having a successful entertainment venue. Almost every club I have encountered in the past 50 years considers performing musicians as an appliance, much like a jukebox or a washing machine. They put some money in and the music comes out. The owners could care less about the musicians as long as the house is full during the performance. On the contrary, most of these places repel conscientious music enthusiasts because of one glaring thing, bad sound. There is nothing worse for me to spend my time and money to be entertained by live music than to experience it tortured by bad sound. This has become even worse now that sound system technology has improved so much, proving that no matter how much technology has improved, it does not help bad sound in clubs. It is worse than ever. That and the fact that most clubs are toys for under-stimulated and partially deaf owners who could care less about the music and the musicians. My point is that a sound system does not equal good sound. It is mostly the acoustic treatment of the room. Then, and only then, proper speaker placement that makes for good sound. Most club owners are either ignorant of this or do not care about good sound. Clubs live or die on one main factor. The invisible yet audible wow factor. The key to constant success is constant renewal. Good fidelity and sound reproduction and professional operation standards go very far toward wowing clientele. Bad sound reproduction and operation can lead to financial failure, but many club owners are not interested in money. The primary factors for poor sound. Number one, poor room acoustics. 
the naked room. Treating the room for acoustics and proper speaker placement is as important, if not more so, than the speakers, the electronics, and the wiring, etc. Acoustic equalization, otherwise known as treatments, is usually the purview of acoustic engineers. This obscure science is usually physically overlooked and disregarded by club owners. Acoustic equalization can add world-class quality to a club sound. Proper speaker placement together with the use of pylons, cylindrical, diffusers, etc., will create previously unrealized superior performance. Superior sound system performance is not obtainable without acoustic room treatment. Disregarding this allows a room that is acoustically out of control. Control of the acoustics translates into superior sound quality and therefore happier clientele. Number two, poor speaker placement. This may sound simple, but it is not. Speaker placement is the least understood facet of sound systems. Proper speaker placement should be carefully and scientifically applied. Do not depend on the DJ or musicians to place the speakers. Very few people understand proper application of sound reinforcement devices. Hire an expert with the experience and the instruments to analyze and determine proper placement. Number three, improper installation. Improper installation, lack of maintenance, and improper or uncalibrated electronics it does not matter how much money you spend on the electronics if it is not properly installed. Electronic systems also need periodic maintenance and calibration, just like an automobile. Schedule regular maintenance and calibration at least once a month performed by an experienced technician. Do not depend on DJs bartenders or musicians to keep your sound system running in tip-top condition. Musicians or DJs are like race car drivers. If you are sponsoring a race car, the driver is the least likely person to keep the car in good working order. Number four, poor electronic equalization. Electronic equalization comes in three flavors. Shelving, graphic, and parametric. Shelving controls are your conventional tone controls like treble and bass. A variant of shelving controls is the loudness control or switch you see on most home receivers. Unfortunately, most large sound systems are conspicuously missing this very useful control. Proper use of shelving equalization and loudness equalization by the operator leads to better sound performance than not using them. Most people know about graphic equalization, but few know how to use it or have the instruments to calibrate them properly. Graphic EQ is designed to compensate for inaccuracies and nonlinearity in speaker performance and room acoustics. Once the graphic EQ is calibrated, using acoustic analyzers they should be locked away from tampering hands, like the DJ. Parametric equalizers are usually not used in clubs. Well, that's not true anymore. They are used in recording studios and large public address systems at concerts. Number five, 
distortion from overdriving. Operator abuse, such as a heavy hand on the volume control and yelling into the microphone are typical sources of distortion and speaker amplifier damage, much less irritating the customers. As the audio power increases into a loudspeaker, the driver in the loudspeaker becomes less and less faithful to reproducing the energy it receives. Technically, this is known as non-linearity. There is a point at which this distortion becomes audible. This distortion causes listening fatigue in your clientele and forces them to put distance between them and your cash register. Number six, overbearing loudness. Hot spots of loudness and poor EQ listed above naturally repel clientele. Hot spots are caused by improper and inadequate installation of speakers and poor choice of equipment. Sound reinforcement devices should be chosen specifically for the application. Too much reinforcement creates just as bad an impression as too little reinforcement. Any one of these conditions will repel customers. Any combination of these factors causes intolerable stress to your clientele, driving them out of your club or keeping additional self-respecting clientele from visiting. Good sound means plenty of well-heeled clientele. Operator error. DJs and performing musicians tend to overdrive sound systems. Most, if not all, of middle-aged DJs and professional musicians are partially deaf, operating in diminished capacity. Be sure to hire experienced operators that understand the factors listed above that contribute to poor sound when operating the sound system. Do not hire the guy off the street. Hold regular DJ competition and contest. This keeps your present DJs in line. Use discretion when choosing a DJ because he or she is operating expensive equipment in many clubs costing more than a new automobile. Think of your system the same way as a new car. Would you lend your new car to your DJ? If not, that person may not be a wise choice. Keep the DJ secretly on probation. Establish performance requirements for him that you share with all employees. Encourage comment about the sound and music from your clientele and staff. Consistent failure to perform established requirements results in permanent replacement of the DJ. Conservatively, profanity on the microphone should never be allowed. Profanity on the sound system is a license for your clientele to disrespect you and your property and may lead to violence. Depending on a single person for your business, the DJ, is a mistake. The clue your business is at risk is if you cannot operate without the one DJ being present. Lack of theme variety. Gone are the days of one concept one crowd. Be prepared to change themes. Whether it is daily, weekly, or annually, many clubs find that different themes work best on different nights. Typically, clubs need three or four strong nights a week just to survive rather than a big Friday or Saturday night. Targeting a different market segment each night can revive those dead periods. Themes show off your entertainment creativity. If you have difficulty with this, there are many expert references from which to choose, providing interesting and stimulating theme night motifs to help you effectively attract more clientele. There are few entertainment experts and even fewer expert entertainers. Experimenting is the call here. However, do not experiment with expensive shows and decorations, especially in your first few 
new opening months, skimpy budgets, experienced architects, designers, and contractors do not come cheap, but quality never does either. In the long run, it becomes more expensive to hire inexperienced personnel. There are many approaches to getting the room under control, as many as you can buy. This may sound cynical, but there are many people out there, including professionals, who have been in the sound business for years and they make their living at one aspect of the trade or another, who think they know what to do to make a room sound better. In the past 50 years, the electronics industry has made remarkable progress in the area of sound reinforcement. Unfortunately, many owner-operators think that purchasing a new electronic box or speaker system can make their sound better. And this is true to some extent. The room in which the equipment operates is the primary contributor to the quality of the sound, not the speakers and the electronics. After all, musical performances can be presented without amplification. And in all acoustic performance, the quality of the room acoustics is the entire determining factor in the quality of the performance experienced by the audience. When electronic sound reinforcement is added to a performance, either recorded or live, the room acoustics are also reinforced. Poor acoustics is amplified by the sound system. The concept here is to do things with the sound sources and the reflecting surfaces to enhance sound reinforcement performance. This is done in phases. Number one, measure the acoustic signatures of the reflecting surfaces, both static and dynamic signatures. Number two, determine the best location for the speaker systems using the previous signature analysis, then move them there, usually over and in front of the stage, pointing down, known as flying the speakers, equidistant to most positions in the audience. Determine the best solution to the problems with test fixtures. The test fixtures consist of custom-made pylons cylindrical or conical. These are radiators tuned to the correct size to eliminate the particular acoustic problems for a specific site in the room. Number four, expand fixture placement. By adding more and more pylons and radiators, the room's unwanted acoustic problems come under acceptable control. These additions progress to achieve particular results. The results can be documented and displayed using waterfall spectrum analysis. Generally, echo needs to be eliminated and reverb times need to be reduced to under one half second, approaching the walk-in closet effect. Number five, reanalyze the room for elimination of hotspots of unwanted radiation, which causes listeners unwanted stress and distraction. Number six, calibrate electronic equalizers. By using the waterfall spectrum analyzer, the electronic equalizers can be calibrated to further bring the sound under control. Number seven, Reanalyze static spectrum for equalization. By finding and eliminating the remaining hotspots, the room becomes very manageable. Number eight, recalibrate electronic equalizers. A final adjustment of the electronic equalizer creates a synergistic effect that is truly remarkable. In summary, Clubs live or die on one main factor, the invisible yet audible wow factor. Number one, poor room acoustics. Number two, poor speaker placement. Number three, improper installation, lack of maintenance, 
and improper or uncalibrated electronics. Number four, poor electronic equalization. Number five, distortion from overdriving. Number six, overbearing loudness. Number seven, operator error, lack of theme variety, and skimpy budgets.